hope that you will all join us for all of these wonderful things. And if you want to get more information, you can check our websites, FenimoreArtMuseum.org and FarmersMuseum.org. I think that's really all I wanted to say, except uh, a huge thank you to Miss Jane Clark and the Clark Foundation for their support of this program. And a huge thank you to all of the amazing donors who really made this amphitheater possible. Uh, I think it's a wonderful thing for the community, and I think after tonight's performance, you'll hopefully all agree with me. Um, and thank you to all of you as well for supporting live theater. On with the show. Enjoy. meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain. When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, that will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath, there to meet with Macbeth. I come, Grey Malkin. Articles anon. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. Man. He can report the new estate. Hail, great friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the broil, as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their hearts. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel of the western isles of Kearns and Gallo glasses is supplied, and fortune on his damned quarrel smiling, showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with his brandished steel, which smoked with bloody execution, like Valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave, and ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the nave to the chops and fixed his head upon our battlements. Our valiant cousin, worthy gentleman. Oh. Whence the sun gives his reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders break. Mark, <clears throat> King of Scotland, mark. No sooner justice had with valor armed, taught those skipping kerns to trust their heels, than the Norwegian lord, surveying vantage, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Just made that this our captains, Macbeth and Bankwell? Yes, as sparrows, eagles, or the hare, the lion. If I speak sooth, I must report they were as cannons, or charged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe, except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds, or memorize another Golgotha, I cannot tell. Oh, oh. but I am weak. My gash is cry for help. How well thy words become thee, as thy wounds, they smack of honor both. Go, get him surgeons. Who comes here? Ah, the worthy Thane of Ross. God save the king. Whence camest thou, worthy Thane? From Fife, great king, where the Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, aided by this most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict. Point gets point, rebellious arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit, and to conclude, the victory fell on us. Ha -ha! <laughs> great happiness! No more the Thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interests. Go. Declare his present death. And with his current title, Greek Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth, 
Has what? Where hast thou been, sister? <laughs> Swine! Sister! Where thou? A sailor's wife had chestnuts in her lap and munched and munched and munched. Give me ye, quoth I. All right, thee witch, the rough fed Runyon cried. Her husband's to a lapo gone, master o' the tiger. And in a sieve, I'll fit a sail, and like a rat without a tail, I'll do. I'll do. <laughs> I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give thee a win. Oh, thou art kind. And I another. I myself have all the other, oh. and the very ports they blow, all the quarters that they know. Weary Senites, nine times nine, shall he dwindle, peak and pine, though his bark shall not be lost, yet he shall be tempest off. A drum, a drum, Macbeth doth come. The weird Weird sisters, sisters, hand in hand, hand, posters of of the the sea sea and land, land. Thrice to to thine, thine, and thrice to mine, and and thrice thrice again to to make up nine. (laughs) So fair and foul a day I have not seen. How far is it called to for us? What are these? So withered and so wild in their attire, that look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are on it? Live you, or are you aught that man may question? You seem to understand me, by each at once a chappy finger laying upon her skinny lips. Should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak. If you can, what are you? All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Gloms. All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail Macbeth, who shall be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastical or that which outwardly ye show? My noble partner, you agree with present grace. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favors nor your hate. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth, but greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. (laughs) Thou shalt get king, so thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth. Hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. Of my father's death I know I am Thane of Gloms, but how of Carter? The Thane of Carter lives a prosperous gentleman, and to be king stands not within the prospect of belief no more than to be Carter. Speak, I charge you! <laughs> The earth has bubbles as the water has, and these are of them. Whither are they vanished? <coughs> into the air. And what seemed corporal melted as breath into the wind, would they had stayed. Were such things here as we do speak about, or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prison? Your children shall be kings. You shall be kings. And Thane of Calder, too, and it not so? Who's here? The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. And when you reach thy personal venture in the kingdom's great defense, thou nothing afeard of what thyself didst make, strange images of death. And thick as hail came post with post, and every one did bear thy praises in his kingdom's defense, and poured them down before him. And for earnest of a greater honor, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cawdor, in which addition hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What, can the devil speak true? The Thane of Calder lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Well, he who was the Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. His treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown him. <clears throat> Gloms and Thane of Calder, the greatest is behind. <laughs> Thanks for your pains. Do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the Thane of Calder to me promise no less to them? That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown, besides the Thane of Cawdor. But tis strange, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles, to betray us in deepest consequence. Cousin, a word, I pray you. Two truths are told as happy prologues to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, gentlemen. 
The supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success commencing in a truth I am fain of corder? If good, why does my mind yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Look how our partner's wrapped. Oh, chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir. New honors come upon him, but like strange garments, cleave not to the mold, but with the aid of use. <laughs> Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Give me your favors. My dull brain was fraught with things forgotten. Let us toward the king. Come what come may, time and the hour runs to the roughest day. This execution done on Cawdor, my liege, I have spoke with one who saw him die, who did report, and very frankly, he confessed his treasons, and poured your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing became his life like believing it. He died as one who was studied in his death to throw away the dearest thing he owed, as to a careless trifle. There is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. This is a gentleman on whom I built absolute trust! Worthiest cousin, the signifying gratitude even now was heavy on me. Only I have left to say, more is your do you than more than all can pay. The loyalty in the service I owe in doing it pays itself. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee, and I will labor to make thee full of growing. Noble Banquo, who hath no less deserved, nor must be known, no less to have done so. Come, let me enfold thee and hold me to thy heart. There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. My plenty's joys, wanted in fullness, have lost themselves in drops of sorrow. <laughs> Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are closest, know that we shall establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, who shall be named hereafter Prince of Cumberland, which honor shall not unaccompanied invest him only, for signs of nobleness like stars shall shine upon all deservers. Hey! Hey! I'll be myself the harbinger, and make happy the hearing of my wife with your approach. Humbly take my leave. My worthy card. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down, or else overleap, for in my way it lies. Stars, hydro fires, let that light see my black and deep desires. Come, let's after him. His care has gone before to make us welcome. It is a peerless kinsman. They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them. They have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves heir into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it came misses from the king, who all hailed me Thane of Cawdor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with hail. King that shall be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightst not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay it to thy heart, and farewell. Long thou art, and Cawdor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature, this too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, <clears throat> art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. 
Thou have great gloms, that which cries thus thou must do if thou have it, and that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishes should be undone. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. Is not thy master with him who wert so would have informed for preparation? So please you, it is true. One of my fellows had the speed of him, and almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe topful of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts, and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers. Wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, Hold! Hold! Great lungs. Worthy Cawdor, greater than both by the all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall son that morrow see. Your face, my fame, is as a book where men may read strange matters. Beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall for all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle hath a pleasant seat. Its air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself to our gentle sense. The air is delicate. Ah, see, see our honored hostess. The love that follows us sometimes is our trouble. Yet still, we love is love. All our service in every point, twice done and then done double, were poor and single business to contend against those honors deep and broad wherewith your majesty loads our house. For those of old and the late dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermits. Where's the thane of Cawdor? We coursed him to the heels. We had purpose to be his purveyor, but he rides well, and his great love, sharp as a spur, has helped him to his home before us. Fair and gentle lady, we are thy guest tonight. Your servants ever have theirs themselves and what is theirs in comp to make their audit at your highness' pleasure, still to return your own. Take my hand and lead me to mine host. We love him highly and will continue our graces toward him. By your leave, lady. Done. 
happened and to well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with it so see success that but this blow might be the be all and the end all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instruction which being taught returns the plague the inventor. He's here in double trust, first as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then is his host, who should against his murderer shut the door and up bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels, trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. I have no spur to prick the side of my intent, but only vaulting ambition which overleaps itself and falls on the other. How now, what news? He has almost sucked. Why have you left the chamber? Did he ask for me? No, you know he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people, which will be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I account thy love. Art thou a fear to be the same in thine own act in valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemest the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem? Letting I dare not wait upon I would. I dare do all that may become a man. He that dares do more is none. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise with me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now doth unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail. We fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we'll not fail. When Duncan is asleep, where to the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convince that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume and the receipt of reason a limbic only. When in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not put upon his spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great well? Bring forth men, children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received? when we have mocked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and use their very daggers if they had done it. Who dares receive it other as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? Oh, I am settled and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away and mock the time of fairer show. False face must hide with the false heart doth know. How goes the night, boy? The moon is down. I have not heard the clock. She goes down at twelve. I take it tis later, sir. Oh, take my sword. Whose husbandry in heaven, their candles are all out. Take me that, too. Uh, a heavy summons lies like lead upon me, and yet I would not sleep. Merciful powers restrain in me the cursed thoughts that nature gives way to in repose. Uh, give me my sword. Who's there? A friend. What, sir, not yet at rest? King to bed. He has been an unusual pleasure and sent forth great largesse to your offices. This diamond, he greets your wife withal by name of most kind hostess. <clears throat> Shut up in measureless content. Being unprepared, us will became the servant to defect which else should free have wrought. All's well. I 
dreamt last night of the three weird sisters. To you, they have showed some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when you can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business, if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. If you will plead to my consent what it is, it shall make honor for you. So I lose none in seeking to augment it. But still keep my bosom franchise and allegiance clear, I shall be counseled. Good repose, the wine. Thanks, sir. The light to you. Go. And bid thy mistress, when my drink is ready, she strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. a dagger which I see before me. The handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not. Yet I see thee still. Art thou not fatal vision sensible to feeling is the sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, the false creation proceeding from the heat of blessed brain? I see thee still in form as palpable as this which now I draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. Though my eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon, gouts of blood which was not so before. There's no such thing! It is the bloody business that conforms us to my eyes! Now, over the one half world, nature seems dead. And wicked dreams abuse the curtain sleep. And with it, murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, moves like a ghost. Thou firm and sure set earth, hear not my steps, which way they walk, for fear thy very stones prate of my whereabout. And take the present horror from the time which now suits with it. I threat he lives. Words the heat of deeds too cold breath gives. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven. Or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Peace. It was the owl that shrieked. The fatal bellman which gives the sternest good night. He is about it. The doors are open and the surfeited grooms do mock their charge with snores. I have drugged their possets that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Who's there? What ho? Alack, I am afraid they have awaked, and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband. I had done the deed. Did I not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? No. As I descended. I. Ah, who lies in the second chamber? Malcolm. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. This one did laugh in his sleep. No one cried murder. They did wake each other. I stood and heard them when they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. And they are two lodged together. No one cried. God bless us and amen. The other, they had seen me with his hangman's hands. Listening to fear, I could not pronounce amen when they did say God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. To wherefore can I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways, so it will make us mad. I only thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of hair, the death of each day's life. 
Sore labour's bare form of her mind, great nature's second course. She never shall my feet. What do you mean? And still the cry, sleep no more, to all the house. Glams at murdered sleep, therefore Carter shall sleep no more. I best shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Who, I worthy thing, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go, get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring the daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. Oh, I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. Infirm of purpose. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood which fears a painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms with all, for it must seem their guilt. What is that knocking? How is it with me when every noise appalls me? What hands are here? Oh, they pluck out mine eye. Will all great Neptune's ocean clog this blood? Clean from my hands. No, this my hand will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Your constancy hath left you unattended. Come, more knocking. Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. Know my deed, or best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking! I would thou could. Here is a knocking indeed. <laughs> if a man were porter of all hell gates, he should have all turning the key. Knock, knock, who is there in the name of Beelzebub? Faith, he is a farmer <laughs> that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty all. Come in, farmer. <laughs> Have napkins and out about you. Here, you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock, who's there in the other devil's name? Faith, he is an equivocator. I could swear on both scales against you, the scale, who committed treason, <coughs> enough for God's sake. Yet you could not equivocate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator. Knock, knock, who's there? Faith, here's an English tailor. Come hither. For stealing out a French hose. Oh, come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Knock, knock, who's there? Ever act quiet. Well, this place is too cold for hell. Oh. <laughs> I'll devil porter it no further. I had thought to let him some of all professions, all the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon, anon, anon. I pray you, remember the porter. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cook. <laughs> and drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. And what three things does drink especially provoke? <laughs> Mary, sir. Nose painting, sleep, and urine. 
<laughs> that treats It provokes and it unprovokes. It provokes the desire, then it takes away the performance. And therefore, much drinks are may be said to be an equivocator. <laughs> it let tree. It makes him, and it mars him. It sets him on, and it sets him off. It persuades him, and disheartens him. Makes him stand to and not stand to. In conclusion, giving him the lie and his sleep leaves him. <laughs> I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir. I the very so taunt me. But I was too, being too strong for him, and I think giving my legs a while, I made a shift to cast him. <laughs> Is thy master stirring? Oh, I see our knocking has awakened him, for here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow both. Is the king stirring, worthy they? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll take you to him. Well, I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. Uh, the labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. Well, I shall make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. He goes the king hence today. He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly where we lay. Our chimneys were blown down, and as they see strange lamentings heard in the air, strange screams of death, and prophesying of accents terrible, strange lamentings and confused combustion and dire events. <laughs> New hatch to the woeful time, the obscure bird clamored the live long night. Some say the earth was feverish and did shake. <laughs> it was a rough night. My young remembrance got parallel a fellow to it. Horror! 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 It's tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? What's the matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke out the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What is it? The life you say? Mean you, his majesty. Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourselves. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo, Ross, Leons, Malcolm, awake! Shake off this downy sleep! Death's counterfeit, and look on death itself! Up! Up! And see the great doom's image! Banquo, Malcolm! As from your graves rise and walk like sprites! To countenance his horror. Ring the bell. What is the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parlay the sleepers of the house? Speak! Speak! Gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I could speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Banquo! Banquo! A royal master's murdered. What? In our house? Too cool anywhere. He is up, I pray thee. Contradict thyself and say it is not so. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed life. From this instant, there's nothing serious. Immortality <laughs> all's but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is thrown, and the mere leaves left this vault to brag of. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it, the head, the spring. The fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. By whom? Those in this chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were abashed with blood, as were their daggers, which unwiped laid upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet, if you repent me of my fury, then I did kill them! Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, uh, amazed, temperate, and furious, loyal, and neutral in a moment? No man! The violent expedition of my love outran the pause of reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood. His gash stabbed looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There, 
The murderers, steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain? They had a heart to love, and in his heart courage to make his love known. Help me hence! Help! Look to the lady! And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer in exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. By the great hand of God, I stand, and against this undivulged pretense, I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So, so all. And let us briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. Well, well contended. contended. Well contended. What will I do? I'll not consort with them to show an unfelt sorrow is an office that the false man does easy. I'll to England. This murderous shaft that shot has not yet lighted, and my safest way is to avoid its aim. Therefore, to horse, and let us not be dainty of leave taking, but shift away. There's warrant in the theft that steals itself when there's no mercy left. Three score and ten, I can remember well. Since the volume of which time I have seen hours dreadful and things strange, but this sore night had trifled former known. Ah, good father, thou seest the heavens threatened with man's axe, threatens his bloody stage. By the clock tis day, yet dark night strangles the traveling lamp. Is the night's predominance or the day's shame that darkness does the face of the earth entomb when living light should kiss it? Tis our natural, even like the deed that's done. On Tuesday last, a falcon, towering in her pride of place, was by a mousing owl hawked at and killed. And Duncan's horses, a thing most strange and certain, though beauteous and swift, the minions of their race, turned wild in nature, broke their stalls, flung out, condemned against obedience, as if to make war with mankind. It is said they, they did so. Ah, here comes the good Macduff. How goes the day, sir, now? Why see you not? Is known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain. Uh, alas, the day. What good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm, the king's son, is stolen away and fled, which puts upon him suspicion of the deed. Against nature still, thriftless ambition that will driven up one's life's own means. Then the sovereignty is like to fall upon Macbeth? He's already named and gone to Scone to be invested. Will you to Scone? No, cousin, out to fight. Well, I will thither. Well, may you see things well done there. Adieu, lest our old robes sit easier than our new. Good night, Father. God's benison go with you, and with those who would make good of bad and friends of foes. Thou hast it now, King Cawdor gloms all, as the weird women promise. And I fear thou playest most foully for it. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine, why, by the verities on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well, and set me up in hope? But hush, no more. Here's our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it were as a gap in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll require your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are, with the most indissoluble tie for ever now. Ride you this afternoon. Aye, my good lord. Uh, we should have else desired your good advice, which still have been both grave and prosperous in today's council, but we'll take tomorrow. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time to exist in supper. Go not my horse the better, I must become a borrower of the night for a dark hour or twain. They are not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousin is bestowed in England or in Ireland, not confessing his cruel parricide, filling his hearers with strange invention. But of that tomorrow, when therewithal we shall have cause of state craving us jointly. How you to horse at you to return at night? Goes Fleance with you? Aye, my good lord. Our time does call, Han. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot, and so do I commend you to their backs. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. To make society the sweeter welcome, we shall keep ourselves till supper time alone. While then, 
I'll be with you. Seaton, a word with you. Attend those men, our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing but to be safely thus. Our fears and bank woes stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared, as much he dares, and to the dauntless temper of his mind he hath a wisdom that does guide his valor to act in safety. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him, father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched with some unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered. But rancors in the vessel of my peace only for them and mine, eternal jewel given over to the common enemy of man to make them kings, the seed of Banquo kings. Rather than so, come, fate, into the list and champion me to the upper end. Who's there? Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was so, please, Your Highness. Well then, now, have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he in the times past which held you so under fortune, which you had thought had been our innocent self. This I made clear to you in our last conference, how you were born in hand, how crossed, the instruments, the wrought with them, and all things else that might to a notion craze or half a soul say, thus did Banquo. Oh, you made it known to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever. We are men, men my liege. Aye, in the catalogue they go for men, as hounds, greyhounds, mongrels, spaniels, curs, sloughs, water rugs, and demi are all crept by the name of dogs. The value file distinguishes the swift, the slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter, every one according to that gift which bounty of nature hath in him placed, whereby he does receive particular additions. I will place that business in your bosoms, whose enemy, whose execution takes your enemy off, grapples you to the heart and love of us, where our life but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my lord, so racked by all the vile blows and buffets of the world, that I am reckless in anything I might do to spite the world. And I another, so weary of disaster and tugged to fate, that I would set my lie on any chance to mend it, or be rid of it. <laughs> Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, True my, my lord. lord. So was he mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Our lives Let are your being. spirits shine through you. Within the hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the very spy, the time, the moment on it, for it must be done tonight. Fleance, his son, that keeps in company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, I'll call upon you in honor. We are resolved! I'll call upon you straight, abide within! Concluded, Banquo, thy soul's flight to find heaven, must find it out tonight. <clears throat> Is Banquo gone from court? Aye, madam. Say to the king, I would attend his leisure for a few words. I will, madam. Not had, all spent, where our desire is got without content. Tis safer to be that which we destroy, than by destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now 
Oh my lord. Why do you keep alone? Of sorriest fancies your companions making, using those thoughts which should indeed have died with them they think on. Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself while our poor malice remains in danger of a former tooth. But let the frame of things disjoint. Both the world suffer and we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us lightly. Better to be with the dead when we to gain our peace and set the peace than on torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Come on! Gentle, my lord, sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial with your guests tonight. <clears throat> so will I, love. So I pray be you, let your remembrance apply to Banquo, present an eminence both with eye and tongue, unsafe the while they must lay our honors in these flattering streams and make our faces visits to our hearts disguising what they are. You must leave this! So full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife, thou knowest Banquo when his fiance lives. But in them nature's copy is another term. Well, there's comfort yet. They are assailable. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck. For thou applaud the deed, and with thy bloody and invisible hand, cancel and tear to pieces that great bond which keeps me pale. Keep thee still. Things bad begun make strong themselves by ill. So pretty, go with me. And who did bid thee join us? Tis Macbeth. He needs not our mistrust. Hark, I hear footsteps. Give us a light there, ho. Here spurs the lady traveler of haste. To gain the time we in, near approaches the subject of our watch. Join us. A light, a light. It is he. It will be rain tonight. Let it come down. Oh, oh treachery. Oh! Why, we are fly, fly, fly! The beast we bend! Oh, slave! Say how much is done. You know your own degrees. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thank Thanks to his, his majesty. majesty. Ourself will play the humble host and mingle with society. Our hostess keeps her state, but in good time, we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart speaks. They are welcome. There's blood on thy face. Tis Banquo's dead. But of thee without that he within is he dispatched. Smith, he's cut. That I did for him. Oh, thou art the best of the cutthroats. Yet he is good that did the like for Fleance. Thou didst it thou for non for him. Royal sir, Fleance is escaped. Here comes my fit again. I had else been perfect. All as marble founded as the rock. As broad and general as the casing air, but now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bound in the saucy doubts and fears. But back was safe. Safe in a ditch he bides. Twenty trench gashes in his head. The least a death in age. Thanks for that. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that spread that nature in him that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. Get thee gone. My royal lord. You do not give the cheer. Sweet remembrance, sir. Now, good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. May it please, Your Highness, sir. Here had we now our country's honor roof with the 
grace a person of our bank will present, who may I rather challenge for unkindness and pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. <coughs> What is it that Wait, moves your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my good lord? What, my good lord? Thou canst not say I did it. <laughs> Never shake thy gory locks at me! Gentlemen, rise. His highness is not well. Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep seat. <laughs> <laughs> the fit is momentary. Upon a thought he will again be well. If much you know him, you will offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? I am a brave and a dare look upon that which might uphold the devil. A proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fear. This is the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Oh, these fits and stumps. Impostors to prove fear would well become a woman's story in a winter's fire authorized by her granddad. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces? When all is done, you look but on a stool! Really see there! Behold! Look! Lo, what say you? Oh, what care I? If thou canst not speak to! If our charnel houses, our graves, must send those that we bury back, our monument to be the laws of tights! Quite! Unmanned in folly. Oh, if I stand here, I saw him. Fight for shame! No blood has been shed here now. In the olden time, ere human statue purged the gentle wheel, I incensed too. Murders have been performed too terrible for the ear. The times have been when the brains were out, the man would die, and there an end, but now they rise again. This is more strange than such a murder is. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I do forget. <coughs> do not muse at me, my most worthy friends, I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all, and then I'll sit down. They give us a wine, so full. We drink to the general joy of the table, and to our dear friend Bankwell, whom we miss when he were here. To him and all we thirst, and all to all, our, our duties and, and the pledge. pledge. Avaunt and quench thy sight, let the earth hide thee. Thy blood is cold, thy bones are marrowless. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes that thou dost glare with. Think of this, the fears, for this a thing of ghosts, and tis no other. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare I dare? Approach thou, like a rugged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, the hercine tiger, take any shape but that, and my firm nerve shall never tremble, or be alive again, <laughs> and dare me to the desert with thy sword! Hence, horrible shadow! Unreal mockery! Hence! to speak. Augurs and understood relations of my maggot pies and chuffs and rooks brought forth the secretest blood of man. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning. Which is which? How say, sir, that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him? I hear it by the way, but I will send. There's not a one of them but in his house I keep a servant feed. I will tomorrow, and betimes I will, to the weird sisters, 
more shall they speak. For now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. You lack the season of all nature. Sleep! I am in blood stepped so far in, should I wade no more? Returning were as tedious as go o'er. Strange things I have in head that will to hand, which must be acted ere they may be scant. Come, go to bed. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. <clears throat> we are yet but young indeed. and go, in the poison entrails throw, oh, that under cold stone, days and nights has thirty-one, sweltered venom, sleeping got, boiled first in the top pot, double, double, toil and the trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, villain of a fenny snake, in the cauldron boil and bake, eye of newt and toe of frog, wolf bat, and tongue of dog, add as fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and owlet's wing. What a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, scale of dragon, wolf, witch's mummy, more and both of the riven salt sea shark, root of hemlock digged in the dark, Finger of the strangled babe. <sighs> Ditch delivered by a drab. Make the gruel thick and slab. Add thereto a tiger's chaudron for the ingredients of a cauldron. Double, double, double toil and trouble. Fire, burn, and cauldron, and cauldron bubble. bubble. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open the locks! Whoever How now? You secret black and midnight hags. What is it you do? A deed without a name. <laughs> I conjure you. By that which you profess, however you come to know it, answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. Come high or low. Thyself and always show. Macbeth. 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 Beware, Macduff. Beware the thane of fight. Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear, all right. But one word more. He will not be commanded. Here, another. Macbeth! 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 Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of women born shall harm Macbeth. Then live, Macduff, what need I fear of thee? And yet I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. Macbeth! 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 Be lion-muzzled, bold, and take no 
tell so much. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know oh, no more! I will be satisfied! So he I! Be this, and an eternal curse fall on you! Show! 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 Show his eyes! And grieve his heart! Come like shadow! Ah. So depart! Ah. Ah. And now you like the spear of the Banquo! Down! My hair, though, the gold down brow is like the first. The third is like the former. Don't be hanged. Why do you show me this? Four dark eyes. What? With a line stretched out to the crack of doom. Another yet. The seventh. I'll see no more. And yet the eighth appears. Who bears a glass which shows me many more. And now I see it is true. For the blood bolted Banquo. Smiles at me and points at them for his. What? Is this so? This is so. But why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? That this great king may kindly say, our duties did his welcome pay. <laughs> 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 Gone. Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. <coughs> Satan! Come in without there! Your will is my wish, my lord. What news more? Have you seen the weird sisters? No, lord. They ain't they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. I thought I heard the galloping of horse. Who was came by? Was two or three that tell you words. Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my lord. Aye. <laughs> Thou anticipate my dread exploit. The flighty purpose there is overtook, but the deed go with it. From this instant, the very first things of my heart shall be the first things of my hand, and even now, to crown my thoughts with acts, be it thought and done. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon fight. Give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his lie. No more boasting like a fool. This deed I'll do before this purpose cool. <laughs> what had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. But you know not whether it was his reason or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife? To leave his bags, his mansion, and his titles in a place from whence himself to fly? All is the fear and nothing is the love. So little is the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cuz, cruel are the times when we are traitors and do not know ourselves. We hold to rumor what we fear, yet know not what we fear and float upon a sea of wild and violent troubles, each way and move. I take my leave, shall not be long but till I'm here again. Pretty cuz, blessings upon you. Father he is, and yet he's fatherless. I would be so much a fool should I stay longer. To be my disgrace and your discomfort, I take my leave at once. Sirrah, your father's dead. What will you do now? How will you live? As birds do, mother. What, with worms and flies? With what again I mean, and so do they. Poor bird, thou hast never feared the net nor lime, the pitfall nor the gin. Why should I, mother? Poor bird, they are not set for. My father isn't dead, for all you say. Yes, he is dead. And what wilt thou do for a father? Nay, what will you do for a husband? I thought I could buy me 20 at any market. Then you'll buy them to sell again. Thou speaks with <laughs> all thy wit, and yet in faith with wit enough for thee. Was my father a traitor, mother? 
Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. Be all traitors that do so? Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. Must they all be hanged that swore and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? Why, the honest men. Then the liars and swears are fools. But there are liars and swears now to beat the honest men and hang up them. Poor monkey. How wilt thou do for a father? If he were dead and you did weep for him, it would be a good sign you loved him. If you did not weep, it would be a good sign I would quickly have a new father. <laughs> <laughs> How thou talkest. Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you known, but in your state of honor I am perfect. Methinks when danger does approach you nearly, and therefore if you would take a homely man's advice, be hence with your little ones. Be not found here. To fright you thus, methinks I am too savage, but to do worse to you were fell cruelty. Heaven preserve you, I dare abide no longer. Oh, whither should I fly? I have done no harm. I remember now, I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable, and to do good sometimes is accounted dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put on this womanly defense to say I have done no harm? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified as such as thou mayst find him. <laughs> he is a traitor. My own Jewish mortal sword, and like good men bestride our downfall and birthdom. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face, that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland and yelled out like syllable of dollar. What I believe, I'll wail. What no believe, and what I can redress, as I will find the time to friend, I shall. Now what you have spoke, it may be so perchance, this tyrant whose sole name blisters our tongues, which one thought honest, you have loved him well. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. That which you are, my thoughts cannot transpose. Why in that rawness left you wife and child? Those precious motivators, those strong knots of love, without leave taking. Oh, bleed, bleed, poor country. Great tyranny, lay thou thy basis sure, for goodness dare not check thee. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst, for all the space in the tyrant's grasp and the rich east of boot. <clears throat> oh, see who comes here. <clears throat> Stand Scotland where it did? Alas, poor country, almost afraid to know itself, where nothing but those who know nothing can smile even once. What's the newest grief? Of an hour's age doth hiss the speaker. Each minute teems a new one. How does my wife? Why, well. And all my children? Well, too. Be not a niggard of your speech. How ghosts? They were well at peace when I did leave them. Would I could answer that comfort with the light. But I have words that would be howled out upon the desert air, where hearing should not lunch them. Well, what concern they? The general cause, or is it a fee grief due to some single breast? No mind that's honest but shares in them some woe, though the main part pertains to you. If it be mine, keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Let not your ears despise my tongue forever. For possessed of it is the heaviest sound that ever yet you heard. I can guess at it. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. For in the matter of these quarry, these murder dear, to relate the manner. Merciful, the death of you. Merciful heaven! Man, ne'er pull your hats upon your brows. Give sorrow words. The grief that does not speak whispers o'er the fraught heart and bids it break. Children, too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence. 
My wife killed too? I have said. Be comforted. Let us make medicines of this great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones. Did you say all? Well, guy, all? What? All my pretty chickens and their dad at one fell swoop? Dispute it like a man. I shall do so. But I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their demerits, but for mine fell slaughter on their souls. Oh, heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. O oh, gentle heavens, cut short all intermission. Front to front, bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself. Within my sword's length set him. If he scape, heaven forgive him too. Go we to the king, <clears throat> our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking, and the powers above strap on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. Long is the night that never finds the day. I have two nights watched with you, but can perceive no truth in your report. When was it she last walked? When his majesty went into the field, she rose from her bed, threw her nightgown upon her, unlocked her closet, took forth paper, folded it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and then again return to bed, yet all this while in most fast sleep. The great perturbation in nature is to receive at once the benefit of sleep, and do the effect of watching. In this slumbery agitation beside her walking and other actual performances, what at any time have you heard her say? That, sir, I will not report after her. You may to me, and tis most meet you should. Neither to you nor to anyone with no witness to Swear to my speech. Oh, no, here she comes. This is her very guise. And upon my life, fast asleep. Observe, stand close. How came she by that light? It stands by her. She has light by her continually. Tis her command. You see, her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. <clears throat> what is it she does now? Look how she rubs her hands. This is an accustomed action with her to see him thus washing her hands. I have known her to continue this a quarter of an hour. Yet, here's a spot. Pardon me, speak. I will set down what comes from her to satisfy my remembrance the more strongly. Out, death spot. I say! One, two, why then tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear who knows it when none can call our power to account? Yet, who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him! You mark that. The bane of fight had a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands ne'er be clean? No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all with this starting. Go to, go to. You have known what you should not. She has spoke what she should not. I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Here's the smell of the blood. Still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little
and for all the dignity of the whole body. Well, well, well. Pray God it be, sir. This disease is beyond my practice. But I have known those which have walked in their sleep who have died wholly in their beds. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out of his grave. Even so. To bed, to bed. There's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. To bed. To bed. To bed. To bed. Don't she go now to bed? To bed. Directly. Thou whisperings are abroad. Unnatural deeds do breed unnatural thoughts. Infected minds, their deaf fellows will discharge their secrets. More need she the divine than the physician. God, God forgive us all. Look after her. Move her from the means of all annoyance and still keep eyes upon her. So good night. My mind she hath made it and amazed my sight. I think, but I dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. The English power is at hand. Let on by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. Revenge is burning them for their dear causes, which the bleeding and the grim alarm excites the mortified man. What does the tyrant? Well, great Dunson ain't he strongly fortified. Some say he's mad, others that lesser hate him do call him valiant fury, but for certain, he cannot buckle his discomfort cause within the belt of rule. Now does he feel his secret murders sticking on his hands. Now minutely revolts, upbraid his faith breach. Those he commands move only in command, nothing in love. Now does he feel his title hanging loose about him like a giant robe on a dwarfish thief. Make we are march to burn him. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. <laughs> Till burn them borders come to Dunstane, I cannot taint with beer. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? Oh, the spirits that know all mortal consequence have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall e'er have power upon thee. Then fly, false thanes, and mingle with the English epicures. The mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor taint with fear. Go! The devil damn thee black, thou cream-faced loon! Where gotst thou that goose look? There be ten thousand. Geese, villain! Soldiers, sir. Go prick thy face and o'erred thy fear, thou lily-livered boy. What soldiers patch? Death of thy soul! Those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers, wayface? The English force, if it please you. Take thy face hence. Satan! I am sick at heart when I behold Satan, I say! This push will cheer me ever, or deceit me now. I have lived long enough. My way of life has fallen into the seer, the yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old age as honor, obedience, love, troops of friends. I must not look to have, but in their stead, curses not loud but deep, mouth honor, breath which the poor heart would fain deny and dare not seek that I say. What is your gracious pleasure, my lord? What news more? All is as was previously reported. I'll fight though from my bones my flesh be hacked. Give me mine armor. If tis not needed yet. I'll put it on. Send out more horses. Scare the country round! Hang those that talk of fear! Bring me my armor! How does your patient, doctor? Not so sick, my lord, as she is troubled by thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest. Cure her of that. Canst thou not minister to a mind disease? Pluck from the memory a rooted sorrow? Raise out the written troubles of the brain, and with some sweet, oblivious antidote, 
Cleanse the stuffed bosom of that perilous stuff that weighs upon the heart. Therein the patient must minister to himself. Throw physic to the dogs. Oh, none of it. Come! Put mine armor on. Give me my stuff. Seaton, send out. Doctor, the thanes fly from me. Come, sir, dispatch. Doctor, if thou couldst cast the water of my land, find her disease, and purge it to a sound and pristine health, I would applaud thee to the very echo that should applaud again. Pull it off, I say! <laughs> what rhubarb, sime, or purgative drug would scour these English hence? Hearst thou of them? Ay, my good lord, your royal preparations make us hear something. Bring it after me. <laughs> Shall not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. To ride from Dunsinane away and clear, profit again should hardly draw me here. What, it, what is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby we shallow the numbers of our great host and make discovery air and report of us. We learn no other, but the confident tyrant keeps still in Dunsinane and will endure our setting down before it. This is main hope, but where there is advantage to be given, both more and less have given him the revolts. But those who serve with him are constrained things, whose hearts are absent too. As the time approaches, that will with due decision make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. Advance to war! Hey, hey! hey on our banners on the outward walls! <laughs> the cry is still, they come! Our castle's strength will laugh for siege to scorn! Here, let them lie till famine and the ague eat them up! <laughs> Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have met them dareful, beard to beard, and beat them backward home! <laughs> what is that noise? It's like the cry of women, Lord. I have almost forgot the taste of fears. The time has been. My senses would have cooled to hear a night shriek. And my, and my fell of hair to dismal treaties would rouse and stir as life were in it. I have supped full with horrors. Dying is familiar to my slaughterous thoughts cannot once start me. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time, such a word. Tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Thou comest to use thy tongue. Thy story, quickly. Gracious, my lord, I should report what I say I saw, but I know not how to say it. Well, say, sir. As I did keep my watch upon the hill anon, as I looked toward Vernon Wood, methought I saw the wood begin to move. Liar and slave! I would endure your wrath were it not so. I say within this three mile you will see it coming. I say a moving road. Now thou speakest false. Upon the next tree shalt thou <laughs> hang alive till famine cling thee. If thy speech be sooth. 
I care not if thou dost for me as much. I pull in resolution and begin to doubt the fiend that lies like truth. Fear not till Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinane. And now a wood comes toward Dunsinane. Arm! Arm and out! And that which he avouches does appear. And there is no flying hence nor tarrying here. I get to be weary of the sun. I wish the estate of the world were now undone. Blow wind! Come rack! At least we'll die with harness on our back! Ah! 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 That way the noise is! Tyrant, show thy face! If thou be a slain, and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt me still! Ah! 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 Why should I play the Roman fool and die on my own sword? <laughs> Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better on them! <laughs> I cannot strike in wretched curds, whose arms are high and to bear their staves. Either thou, Macbeth, or else my sword with an unbatted edge I sheathe again undeeded. Oh, let me find him fortune, and more I beg not! They have tied me to a stake! Ah! Ah! I cannot fly, but bear like I must fight the course. Ah, 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 the born of woman! Such a one am I to fear, or none! <laughs> what is thy name? Thou wouldst be afraid to hear it. No, though thou callest thyself a hotter name than any is in hell. My name's Macbeth. The devil himself cannot pronounce a title nor more unhateful to mine ear. No, nor more fearful. Thou liest, poor tyrant. With my sword, I'll prove the lie thou speakest. I smile at, uh, weapons laugh to scorn, brandished by a man that's of woman born. <laughs> turn, hellhound, turn. Of all men else, I have avoided thee, but get thee back. My soul is too much charred of blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. The bloody of villain in terms can give thee out. <laughs> Thou lose of labor! Let thy blade fall on vulnerable crest. I bear a charmed life, which was a yield to one of woman born. Despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee Macduff was from his mother's womb. Untimely ripped! Ah. A curse would be the tongue that tells me so, mm. or it cowed my better part of man. And be these juggling fiends no more believe that palter with us in a double sense, but keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee, then yield thee, coward, and live to be the gaze and show of the time. We'll have thee, as our rarer monsters are, painted upon a pole, and under it, here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, though Burnham would become to dunce in aim. And thou oppose it being of no woman born, yet I'll try the last. Lay on, Macduff! <laughs> 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 My lord, Seward! Your son, my lord. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. He only lived but till he was a man. The sooner no witch had his prowess confirmed to the unshrinking station where he stood, but like a man he died. Then he is dead? I and carried off the front your 
cause of sorrow must not be measured in his worth, for then it hath no end. And he is hurt before. Aye, on the front. He's worth more sorrow, and that'll spend on him. They say he parted well and paid his score, so God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. <laughs> Hail, King, for so thou art. Behold, here stands the usurper's cursed head. <laughs> the time is free. I see thee compass with thy kingdom's pearl, who speak my salutations in their minds, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King of Scotland!